Hello, my name is Hugh Campbell and I'm the Head of Architecture in UCD. And the piece I wrote about for the series is the N3 Pavilion designed by Tom Dupuer. The N3 may be the shortest lived of the artworks in this series, designed and built for the Venice Biennale of Architecture in 2000. It was never reconstructed after its five month stint at that event. This was the first time, in fact, that Ireland had been invited to participate in the Biennale and the architect and curator Raymond Ryan was appointed by the Irish Architecture Foundation and then he in turn selected Tom Dupuer as the exhibiting architect. Dupuer had by this stage already acquired a reputation as an exciting and precocious talent through early built projects including the visitor centre at Balancholic Gunpowder Mills which he designed with M. O'Neill and a number of striking interiors and extensions. And what he proposed for Venice was what he called an intelligent structure that managed to incorporate a rich stew of ideas and references into a singular form. In a contemporary homage to the ancient construction method of corbelling, the pavilion was built entirely from peat briquettes, 40,224 of them to be exact, stacked in layers that stepped gradually inwards to form a partial enclosure. In form, the pavilion was described as a slumped cube, and in plan, the briquette walls were configured as an N, two outer walls and an inner wall, dividing two pockets of PT space. The N spelled out in plan referred not only to the north point that we traditionally find on maps and site drawings, and in fact the pavilion was oriented north-south, but also to St Nicholas, also known as Santa Claus, whose bones reside in Venice and conveniently the church of St Nicholas of Myra on Francis Street sat next to the fuel depot, which was the source of the briquettes. The web of references and coincidences extended. Other, less literal points of reference included Cormac's Chapel in Cashel for corbelling, confessionals, which are confined by apartheid spaces, and labyrinths. This network of connections between Ireland and Venice was illustrated alongside other visual clues such as John Hind postcards, Aer Lingus planes, on a set of nine calling cards which were encountered at the pavilion centre arranged like votive cards on a single briquette cast in yellow rubber. Now at this point in de Poyer's career, as the yellow rubber might have suggested, Joseph Boyce and Marshal Duchamp were the guiding lights. Boyce the mystic shaman who charged base materials with significance, and Duchamp, the wry conjurer of compelling scenarios. N3 clearly borrows from the spirit of both. It was part stage set, part contemplative retreat. And if the pavilion's intellectual armature might seem overly complex, its material presence was strong and simple, almost primitive. The stacked peat made for a dark, claustral and pungent interior, redolent of the bog. Pavilions at international exhibitions, such as the Biennale, have long been charged with the twin responsibilities of, on the one hand, reflecting national identity, and on the other hand, appearing modern, appearing new. And N3 managed this balancing act consummately. It was made from the very ground of Ireland, after all, but transmuted through technical and intellectual labour into something quick-witted and radical. Erected in the sculpture garden of the Thetis Research Centre on the Venice Lido, the pavilion was a little bit remote from the main sites of the Biennale, but it was well reviewed by the international press and actually became something of a talking point, a place to visit. The selection of de Poer to design Ireland's first pavilion at Venice was vindicated by his subsequent reputation. He went on to produce significant built projects, including a number of private houses and most recently, of course, the Palos Theatre in Galway. While at the same time, he continued to collaborate on a series of publications and exhibitions, including, again, a number of times at the Venice Biennale. But N3 remains the project of his that has acquired an almost mythical status, precisely because maybe so few people saw it. At the end of the Biennale, the pavilion was dismantled and dispersed as landfill, as Raymond Ryan noted in the accompanying publication, returning to its organic origins, the structure has been translated to another country. De Poer had always intended it thus, describing the pavilion tongue-in-cheek as a donation from the land-rich island of Ireland to the land-hungry island city of Venice.